On the Holy Trinity, by St. John of Damascus. Concerning the holy, consubstantial, life-giving Trinity, we confess one nature, one will, one energy, one power, one authority and one lordship, for it is one Godhead and three hypostases, that is, three persons, the property of each person being preserved. And concerning the incarnate dispensation of one of the Holy Trinity, that is, of our Lord Jesus Christ we confess two natures, both the divine and the human, likewise two wills and energies, one hypostasis, that is, one person, for he is one and the same who was begotten before the ages bodlessly and without change and who was conceived of the Holy Mother of God and ever Virgin Mary ineffably and without blemish in the last times, who is holy man and holy God, made known in one hypostasis, passionless with respect to the Godhead and subject to passion with respect to that which was assumed, who manifestly preserved the marks of virginity that is, the seals intact after childbirth. Why did the Son become man, and not the Father or the Spirit? And what did he accomplish by becoming man? The Father is Father and not Son. The Son is Son and not Father. The Spirit is Holy Spirit and not Father or Son. For the property is fixed. For how could it be a property if it changed or became different? This is why the Son of God becomes the Son of Man, who became incarnate from the Holy Virgin and did not stand outside of the filial property. The Son of God became man so that according as he made man, Thus might he bestow on man immortality and eternal life unto enjoyment of eternal goods. Amen. So be it, so be it. As for father and son, the two are not unoriginate, but unmediated. Mixture effects, corruption, and thus things are mixed, as for example water and wine. Union is when one thing is connected to another such that the other is neither decreased nor corrupted, but remains in so far as it exists, as for example the soul and the body. Thus is Christ united without confusion, as perfect God the Word and perfect man. There is one God, Father of the living Word, who is the substance of wisdom and of power and of an eternal imprint, perfect begetter of the perfect, Father of the only begotten Son, and one Lord, only Son from only Father, God from God, imprint an image of the Godhead, effective Word, wisdom enclosing the state of all things, and creative power of the whole of creation true Son of true Father, invisible of invisible, and incorruptible of incorruptible, and immortal of immortal, and eternal of eternal, and one Holy Spirit, having its existence from God, and sprouting, image of the Son, life, cause of life, holy source of holiness, bester of sanctification, in whom is manifested God the Father, who is upon all and in all, and God the Son, who is through all, perfect trinity, neither divided up nor alienated. Therefore there is nothing created or servile in the Trinity, nor anything form a foreign source, whether existing in the first place or introduced later. Nor has the Father ever lacked the Son, nor the Son lacked the Spirit, but the same Trinity is ever unchanged and unaltered. Thus do we put our faith in the blessed and life-giving and undivided Holy Trinity. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, three persons, one image, three imprints, one form. Three hypostases, one Godhead, three properties, one essence, three energies, one grace, three existences, one identity, three who are known, one who is glorified, three names, one confession, three confessions, one faith. The Trinity is God, eternal and unchanging essence, fashioner of being things. The Trinity is God, highest light unapproachable neither comprehended by intellect nor expressed by word. How manifold is God! The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, the blessed nature, the unenvying goodness, the beloved to all who have partaken of the word, the greatly desired beauty, the principle of being things, the wellspring of life, the unapproachable wisdom, the unalterable nature, the untroubled life, the griefless life, around which there is no alteration, which change does not touch, the bubbling wellspring, the unenvying grace, the inexhaustible treasure. We confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son and Word of the Father, light from light, true God from true God, was incarnated and became man of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Glorious Mother of God and ever Virgin Mary, and that he is perfect God and perfect man, one and the same Son both before the Incarnation and after the Incarnation 
consubstantial with the Father according to the Godhead, like us in all respects and consubstantial with us according to the manhood, become man without sin, begotten of the Father before the ages according to the divinity, and begotten in the last days of the Holy Mother of God and ever Virgin Mary, one and the same Son made known to us in two natures, unconfused, unchanged, undivided. For two natures came together and were united without separation, without confusion, without change. For the flesh is flesh and not Godhead, even if it became God's flesh. Likewise the Word is God and not flesh, even if he made the flesh one with itself through the dispensation. Therefore we speak of two natures, but one Christ and Son and Lord, the Word of God incarnate and become man. For the Master did not diminish his own glory because he assumed flesh. For before he took the flesh and humbled himself, only angels knew him, but since he humbled himself, the entirely of human nature has known him. You see how the humiliation did not cause diminishment, but all the more made his glory shine radiantly. But if any of those who think too hard says that the Godhead was or was not in the cross, he implies that it is not in all things and that it is circumscribed in one place. But we say that God is uncircumscribed and uncomprehended. What is the real meaning of God? It is from the, which means arrange, make for God as the maker of all things and the cause of their arrangement, or from Theo, which means run, for God is present everywhere, or from Theos, which is from Theistai to behold, for God beheld all things before they came to be. Lord Kyrios comes from Kairos wax, which signifies authority. What is unity? That which subsists is one hypostasis composed of diverse natures. Does the divine nature participate, or is it participated in? It is participated in. What is commingling sin a life? Confusion. By how many names is the Father honored, and in virtue of what is he called Father? There is one Father, Holy God and Almighty, an originate, eternal, immortal, and circumspected, uninterpretable, unending, without successor, immovable, unexaminable. He is called Father Peter because he keeps to in all things. By how many names is the Son honored, and in virtue of what is he called Son? There is one Son, the Holy Word, unspeakable offspring, an uttered Word, uncircumspected intellect, light of life, Son of righteousness, shepherd, door, we, lamb. He is called Son because he is from the Father. By how many names is the Holy Spirit honored, and in virtue of what is he called Spirit? There is one Holy Spirit, Lord, giver of life, friend of mankind, having essence, having existence, having substance, secure, sharp, carefree, holy power, consubstantial with the Father and the Son. For he is indivisible from the higher powers of God. He is called Spirit Numa because he commands and blows as his counsel pleases. What is Jesus Christ? The Lord become man without sin. What is Christ? the combining of Godhead and animal flesh, unification without change. He is called Christ because according to us he was anointed with flesh. What is holy? That which sanctifies and that which is sanctified. What is word? Word is essential, ever present with the Spirit. In what kind of hypostasis do you worship the Son of God? In the hypostasis of the Word of God, one nature incarnate and worshipped, one worship since two came together into one worshipped person. The essences are two, the wills are two, the power of decision is two, the hypostasis is fivefold. Hypostasis, person, imprint, property, and individual.